Renewables are critical to combat climate change, but the output of wind turbines or solar panels is dependent on weather conditions or time of day. This means that without any large energy storage systems in place, there will be increasing fluctuations to the grid. Thermal power plants have the advantage that they are stable and independent of weather conditions, but not so quick to power up or shut down to balance out power fluctuations. This is why the European Commission has supported an initiative of 10 European organisations to investigate a new way to generate electricity from coal with supercritical CO2. The project is called SCO2 Flex and it has the potential to become a game changer for thermal power plant technology. In a traditional power plant, water is pressurized and heated up in the boiler. The water changes its phase to steam, the steam propels the generator by expansion in the turbine, and then the low pressure steam is cooled down again so that it turns back to a liquid. The phase change from liquid to gas requires energy, which reduces the efficiency of the entire cycle. But there is a way to avoid the evaporation of the working fluid in a power plant. Under atmospheric pressure, water is a solid ice block below zero degrees, a liquid above zero degrees, and a gas above 100 degrees Celsius. When water is put under pressure, the phase changes occur at different temperatures. When the temperature and pressure rise beyond the critical point, water will reach a hybrid liquid and gaseous state called supercritical liquid. This project uses CO2 as a working fluid, and for CO2 the critical point is much lower than of water, just above 33 degrees Celsius and above 73.8 bar. In this state, CO2 combines the high density of a liquid with the low viscosity of a gas. As a result, engineers are able to reduce the size of most plant components significantly. A turbine of a standard 25 megawatts power station has a diameter of approximately 1.5 meters. If supercritical working fluid is used instead of steam, the diameter will be reduced to around 40 centimeters. The project partners have designed and built the individual components of the Brayton cycle and tested them at different facilities. In Florence, Italy, a compressor prototype for CO2 compression near the critical point has been installed on a test rig. Once compressed, the supercritical fluid travels in the cycle through heat recovery exchangers and a boiler to power up the newly designed turbine. In the end, at full load, the cycle could produce enough power to supply 60,000 households with electricity. But the challenge of the engineers was not only to produce the maximum electricity, but to be flexible and adjust the system quickly without compromising its efficiency. The design of the supercritical CO2 Brayton cycle included a number of additional studies and prototypes like the redesign of the boiler which included five heat exchangers to meet the required outlet temperature of 620 degrees Celsius. In addition, new prototypes of the printed circuit heat exchanger for heat recovery were tested to evaluate their hydraulic and thermal performance. This last feature of the printed circuit heat exchangers highlights one of the great advantages of the SCO2 cycle. As there is no phase change of the working fluid, it is much easier to recover heat from the fluid at the exhaust of the turbine. After three years of designing, building and testing different elements of the SCO2 cycle, the consortium has focused on quick power-up, high and efficient provision of electrical energy, and a fast and resource-efficient shutdown when thermal power plant activity is not needed. Under these conditions, SCO2 Flex has achieved a plant net efficiency of 37% resulting in a reduction of 8% of greenhouse gas emissions compared to a water steam cycle equivalent. Water consumption can be reduced by up to 100%, and the next step to bring this technology to the market is to build and test a medium-scale demonstrator in order to confirm the actual behavior of every component in the relevant environment. This means in the coming years, the first flexible SCO2 plant 
should be able to contribute to a stable electricity grid to reach the 2030 EU climate goals.